Hello YouTube, and yes, the Chinese diesel heater is installed. It took only about the good part of an afternoon to do it. And the reason why it was a little bit harder than normal is because I direct retrofitted that Chinese diesel heater, which is about 15 inches long by seven by seven, you know, wide and tall, into the very small space that the Atwood diesel heater was in. I figured that would be a great place for it. Plus it gave me an opportunity uh, to get rid of that old Atwood heater. Ideally, you would do a brand new clean install. You would have a blank slate where you could figure out where you're gonna put it. There's some considerations you have to take into account. That you're gonna need clean air from the outside and you're gonna to need to exhaust carbon monoxide from the unit to the outside. And for that, there's like two one inch holes that have to go through the bottom or floor of your vehicle. So if you can plan that ahead of time and take a look under there, you don't want to punch into your fuel tank or gray water tank or electrical systems or your propane tank or anything like that. Here's some facts about the five kilowatt Chinese diesel heater. The unit is 15 inches by seven by seven. It's five kilowatts or 17,500 BTU. It operates on 15 to 90 watts and draws 1.25 amps to 7.5 amps. The consumption equals 0 0.60 liters per hour, which converts to 0.16 gallons per hour on the high setting, and 0.19 liters per hour, which converts to 0 0.05 gallons per hour on the low setting. I've heard it can run on biodiesel, kerosene, red dye diesel, and even vegetable oil. You'll have to check that for yourself. It's a direct vent, which means there's no noxious fumes. And forced air system means that it mitigates moisture problems. So as with any install, you're going to want to get some type of carbon monoxide uh, detector. Because you have to remember that this is a mechanical unit and things can go wrong with mechanical units. It could develop a crack or maybe the uh, exhaust hose could develop a crack and gases could escape to the interior of the vehicle. So remember safety first. Now if you want to purchase this Chinese diesel heater, I'm going to put a link in the description below where you can order it off of Amazon as well as a carbon monoxide detector. Let's get started. Well here is what the exhaust vent looks like on the outside of the van. It exhausts the hot air from my existing Atwood heater. So going inside of the van, let's take a look at where the actual heater is. And it's going to be just to the right of the refrigerator that's underneath the stove here. And there's the grate for it right there. Now if I remove that grate you're going to be able to see its little tender insides here. And I believe you know, if I, if I do this right, I can just remove a couple of screws and pull this entire unit out. Then I can have a peek in there and see what I have to work with as far as fitting the new China diesel heater into this cavity. Okay, so I unscrew just two screws is what's holding it in. And come off and turn off the gas. And I'm going to disconnect the gas line from the, I guess, the T source or whatever. And I'm going to cap that off with a end cap. It's coming right out there. And I have just enough room to take it out and look at the cavity. Uh, that hump on the bottom there is the wheel well. So I'm going to have to work around that on the installation. And here it is out with the China diesel heater on top of it, just so you can see the size between the two different units right there. I originally intended to use the carcass to mount the heater in and just kind of retrofit it, but it was a pain in the butt so out of all these parts that I ended up having I only kept this which is the plenum or where the vent comes out. And you'll see why in just a moment. So I measured the inside of that cabinet space and I decided to mount the heater on a shelf. So I went to the bandsaw and I cut a hole out the middle after measuring it. I drilled some holes to match the mounting bracket. With the heater shelf made, I went ahead and wrapped it in a foil tape just for heat. And despite it not having it on the bottom here, I did end up doing the entire bottom with the same foil tape before mounting the unit. I just 
place the heater upside down, put, put the shelf over it and fastened it with the bolts. I made sure they were all fastened, snug down, semi-tight, and here's what it looks like on top of that shelf. I'm going to take and do a few measurements here so that I can find out at what height I should place this so that it comes out in the middle of the vent. And here's my scientific calculations right here. I just cut a couple of one foot lengths of aluminum channel and drilled them out so that I could place them inside of that cavity. Here's the result. You see the rails on the left and right right there. That's what the shelf is going to sit on top of. There's the heater and I'm going to place it inside. Now I didn't fasten the shelf to the rails yet because I want to place the heater on it and be able to slide it back and forth or in and out so that it can meet the vent plenum that I'm going to make here in just a second. But with the heater now bolted in place, here's what it looks like. It's centered pretty much on the hole and I put it just probably about an inch higher to give myself some clearance. After I lined things up, I pulled the heater out and drilled the holes for the exhaust and air intake just on the corner of that wheel well, as you can see right here. I have one more hole to drill for the intake air. And I can tell you, the hole saw kit that I got from Harbor Freight in the last video really came in handy and it worked beautifully. I heard a few comments that people had a problem with it. I, as a matter of fact, had none. You know, it worked great. All right, turning our attention back to that plenum that I recovered from the old heater, I took it and I filled in the hole with a piece of Baltic birch plywood. I then took the mostly completed grate plenum and I fed it into the opening of the heater. That's what it looked like. And from there, I wanted to go in from underneath where this cavity is so that I could look up and you can see where the heater meets the plenum. So I just reached in with a pencil and traced where the heater met the plenum. So that way I could cut the hole out with a hole saw. So after I had most of it, you know, at least on the bottom, I went ahead and traced and completed the circle. I clamped the plenum to the table and drilled out the hole. And after a test fit, I decided to go ahead and cover that plenum with the same foil tape. That looked pretty good. Then I fitted it back into the grate, and here's what it looks like with the heater exhaust and where it's going to come out at. Right now I'm drilling a hole for the air intake, and the air intake is going to be right above the heater unit within a cabinet. And I think it's going to keep the noise down. Right, with the location of the heater out of the way, I'm going to turn my attention to the fuel system and where I'm going to put the tank. So I took some careful measurements of the tank and after looking around, I decided that I would put the tank right in here, which is kind of a side cabinet as you enter the Explorer. And I never really use this, it just seems uh, impractical. You, know, you open it up and look, the shelves are about four inches deep. I guess you could put spices in there, but when I open the door, whatever I have in there usually topples over and falls out. And so I thought I would just take and remove this cabinet and remove the shelves and place that fuel tank on the inside of here and then feed the fuel tube over underneath the refrigerator and to the heater. If you primed your fuel lines, one way to keep it from leaking out is by using drip system plugs like I used here. Makes it easy. Here I'm just showing the underside where I capped off the propane and I've run the exhaust and air intake hoses to the bottom of the heater. To draw the line from the heater to the fuel tank, I just poked a wire through underneath the refrigerator with some existing holes. I was going to pull it through to this cabinet. If you look over to the right, there's an opening where the wire is. So that fuel line is just going to be snaked right underneath the refrigerator 
to this point. It's going to go up. It's going to make entry into that fuel tank cabinet that you can see right here. And I'm going to connect it right to the fuel line. There was already power from the previous heater, so I hooked it up. Then I just took and snapped the connectors into place. There's only three of them. I took some wire conduit and started wrapping all the wires and tucking them in to make them nice and pretty. And here's what it looks like. You can see on the right there, the conduit, everything's wrapped up. I've heat protected the fuel line with foil tape around some of that conduit and sealed the intake and exhaust tubes with a heat resistant silicone. Have the connectors tucked up out of the way to the right. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to get some cable stays you know, to pin them to the inside wall here. But I think I can button it up. I put the plenum and the grate back on and it looks just like the stock unit used to. Now all we're going to need to do is to put some fuel in the tank and test out the heater, see how it runs. So with some fuel in the tank, I plugged back in the 15 amp fuse to restore power to the bay from the old heater, which is now connected to the new heater. And I'm going to press the power on button because now it's lit because it, of course, has power. Well, I don't want to forget to roll up the garage door so I can get rid of those carbon monoxide fumes while the heater's running. Okay, let's see how this is working. Push the on button. There. We'll give it a chance to warm up and see how it operates. It's going through a natural kind of thing where it spools up and comes on high for a moment. I don't know if you can hear it. I like using this grate because it lets out a lot of air that's not restricted in any way. It's a much larger area than the stock vent. So I hit the off button and it goes through a cycle where the heater spools up and it goes on high for a moment before it finally winds down, shuts down, blows cool air, cools itself off, and finally shuts down. So, if you like the video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe and ring the bell so you get future notifications. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.